We praise you, God, for another opportunity. We came today to magnify you, Lord. We came today to lift your name up on high. We came today because no other help do we know. You are our only help. You are our only hope. And so we thank you, Jesus. And so we thank you, Jesus. We came to give you thanks because we're thanking you, God, because you woke us up this morning. We thank you, God, because you started us on our way. We thank you, God, for heaven a regulated mind. We praise you, Jesus, because our minds didn't have to wake up being set on you. And so we know today that it's a miracle that we trust you. It's a miracle that we got faith. And so we give your name the praise. Somebody give him the praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. God, we came because we know when we get in your presence, everything changes. We came today because we know when we get in your presence, no demon spirit can stand in your presence. And so, God, we praise you. And so, God, we thank you. And so, God, we're asking today for supernatural strength. We're asking you today to empower us in the physical, to operate in the supernatural. We're asking you today to take us up to another level. We're asking you today to take us up in another realm. Because we can't stay where we are. We can't remain where we are. We've got to be shifted. We got to shift in the realm of the spirit. We got to go to dimensions where no man has gone before. We have to go into the God world. We have to go into the heavens. We have to be able to sit and take counsel from your spirit. And so God, we know that if you call us up, because we can't come up unless you call us up. But if you call us up, we will hear from heaven. If you call us up, we will lend our ears up and press it to your lips. If you call us up, we will hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so, God, we asking up, we asking you today to take us higher. Anybody want to go higher? Anybody want to go higher? If anybody want to go higher, say, Lord, take us higher. Say, Lord, take us higher. Say, Lord, take us higher. God, I want to go higher. God, I want to go deeper. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thirsty today. I don't know about nobody else. But God, I'm thirsty today. I'm still hungry. I know I had an experience yesterday. Yesterday, huh? but that was yesterday. Huh? But God, I want you to know huh? that I'm still thirsty. Huh? Somebody need to walk around this place. Huh? Uh huh. Let's walk around this place. Huh? This is not an hour of entertainment. Huh? But walk around this place. Huh? You gotta take steps in the spirit. Huh? Every time you step, huh? the prayers of your spirit huh? is taking authority over the ground. Huh? Somebody begin to walk and pray. Huh? Somebody begin to walk and pray. Somebody begin to walk in prayer. Come on, open up your mouth. Let me hear you pray. 
open up your mouth. Oh, about somebody, somebody come on, give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Give the Lord glory. Give the Lord glory. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of everything that we're doing today. He's worthy of all of the praise. He's worthy today. He's worthy today. Somebody tell him how worthy he is. Somebody. Tell him how worthy he is. Tell him how worthy he is. You're worthy today, God. 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 Tell him how worthy it is. Tell him how worthy he is. Tell him how worthy he is. Come on, give him praise today. Come on, give him praise today. Come on, give him praise today. Come on, magnify him today. Come on, magnify him today. Come on, magnify him today. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. God, we didn't come to play today. But we came, God, because we need your help. We came, God, because we need your strength. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. God, we know that the prayers of the righteous avail the much. We know God uh, that prayer uh, is a weapon against the enemy. Uh, and so therefore, uh, he will fight it on every hand. Uh, he would fight in our bodies. Uh, he would fight in our strength. Uh, because he don't want us uh, to tap glory. Uh, he don't want us uh, to tap the ram. Uh, but God, we praise you. Uh, we praise you for another ram. Uh, we praise you for another ram. Uh, we praise you for another ram. Uh, we praise you for another another ram. We praise you for another ram. We're going higher today. We're going deeper today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And nothing shall stop us. And nothing shall stop us. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody give God a praise. I said this is the day. I said this is Give him a shout right there. 
Until everything in me 
explode. The reason why the body of Christ is under such an attack because the saints are weak in prayer. Everything you do is weak. But I hear the Lord saying, Zion today better put on some strength. You better pray like you ain't never prayed before. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. This is not the time to give God holy waves. Hold the music up. This ain't the time to sit in your seat and rock back and forth like this is so good. You better get yourself up. Your children, their lives is at stake. I'm not hearing y'all. Your pastor's life, your ministry. Who am I talking to? Your mother's. I don't know about any other prayer meeting but when the Lord calls you and provides a way for you to be in this building under a major prophet praying it's because there are some things that God is warning off concerning you I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing nobody in here talk to me do you understand it's a difference uh, than when somebody just pray. When God leaves a prophet to tell the people that it's time to pray, God is fixing something for you right now. God is working something out. Now for the next two minutes, now for the next two minutes, for the next two minutes, you ain't got time for a telephone. You ain't got time for a camera phone. How are you praying and you taking pictures? I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. This is an urgent matter. Don't nobody go home talking about look at America. Don't nobody go home talking about Black Lives Matter. No, you don't feel that way because if you felt that way, this is a place to resolve that. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I preaching to right now? Hold on, I'll show you for the next two minutes. For the next two minutes, you better pray. And everything that you call out under this prophetic anointing, God said in 48 hours, I'm going to give you a sign that I heard what you were saying. But this is not passive prayer. This is warfare prayer. This is not passive prayer. This is aggressive prayer. This is not passive prayer. This right here, this right here is something different. This is something different. Bishop Husband, it's something different. It's something different because this is not our church that's praying. It's something different because this is not our organization. This is the collective body of Christ coming from everywhere, deciding to pray. Something happens in the world uh, in this prayer. Something in the world uh, is being shifted in this prayer. Now for the next two minutes, for the next two minutes, did nobody say come back to your seat? Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all don't hear me. Because prayer is work. I'm not hearing y'all. Maybe that's why some of y'all can't pray. Prayer is work. You got to bind up a lazy spirit. You got to bind up a tiring spirit. Who am I talking to? Do you say my Dr. Bynum? I feel tired. I feel weary. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why you feel like... I'm too tired right now. Can I tell you why? Because the devil knows that you got the answer. And so the only place he can afflict you in. But listen, when you made a decision to walk in this building, the only weapon he got to keep you from getting it is to attack your body. Because he has lost when you showed up in here. He lost. Who am I talking to? When I count to three, you start praying like this going to be your last time praying. One, two, three. Pray.
That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, now we sound like a church that prays. Now we sound like a church that prays. Now we sound like a church that prays. Go by Shaya da 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 Oh, come on now. We sound like a church that prays. Come on for the next 30 seconds. Lift your voice up all over the building. Come on, lift your voice up. Is that all you got? Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, you may take your seats. Yes, Lord Jesus. Somebody bring the podium down for me. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hobashaya. Hey, come on, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Come on, this is what the devil didn't want. He didn't want us to tap this right here. Come on. Hey, my God, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. This is what he don't want the body of Christ to do. He don't want us to tap this realm. My God from Zion. My God from Zion. Come on, that's it. Come on, give him one more push. Come on, give him one more push. Oh, my Shia. Hey, my Shikate. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. Come on, this is it, this is it. Come on, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds in this realm. 30 more seconds in this vein. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory 
to your name, God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, ba 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 Take your seats. The Lord confirms his word. You may be seated in his presence. And the Lord confirms his word. And the Lord confirms his word. He didn't want this. He didn't want this moment. He didn't want this. Hey,
singing and mean it. Please put your camera phone down, please. Hey, ah, 
Take us on up, Jesus. Take us on up, Jesus. We can't live in this realm. There's not enough oxygen in the spirit to live in this realm. So take us on up, Jesus. Take us on up, Jesus. Uh, people that want to go yeah. oh take us on up Jesus take us on up Jesus <laughs> somebody right quick just give him a shout right there if you want to go up Give me one more time. Yeah. 
be seated. Seated. This is what he hates. This is what the devil hates. He hates it when the whole body of Christ get on one accord. He hates it when we lift up God. He hates it when we desire to come out of his reach. Somebody ought to just lift your hands up and ask God to take you out of the devil's reach. Help! It's blowing fire. It's blowing fire. It's blowing fire. There's a wind blowing in the spirit. There's a wind blowing in the spirit. There's somebody to wave your hand and just put your hand up in it. It's blowing fire. It's blowing fire. the word today I'm gonna give you the scriptures but I'm going to paraphrase for the sake of time thank you Jesus mark the 16th chapter in the ninth verse would be the base scripture the rest of the supporting scriptures would be John 20 and 1 he woke me up at 3.30 this morning. Thank you, God. He gave me this scripture. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Mark, the 16th chapter and the ninth verse, it said, Jesus, we bless God for our bishop this morning. Amen. Put your hands together for our bishop this morning. Amen. That means everybody should stand whenever somebody said, we thank God for our bishop. We don't stay sitting down out of respect. Stand to your feet and honor the reason why we are all in this building because of the vision that was in his spirit I am here to carry out his vision I follow him as he follow Christ hmm. it says now Jesus having risen from the dead early on the first day of the week appeared first to Mary Magdalene from whom he had driven out seven demons. To support this scripture, he woke me up this morning and he started to talk to me as well as bring some levels of correction. Sometimes we think one way and God is headed in another direction. And he started talking to me about the appetite 
of the people. And how now we are in that place where it is a necessity that we have an audience with the Lord. And not an audience with a familiar spirit. But being sure that I'm having an audience with the almighty God. Not a fictitious power. Not a power that is fabricated by the machinery of our system called the religious institution. But understanding that when I go into the presence of the Lord, I am sure of the presence that I am in. We're seeing so much now that the Bible said that if it be possible, even the very elect will be fooled. Because the gifts are on an all-time high. But the gifts that are on an all-time high, you will know them to be not the Spirit of God when they desire to draw you to themselves and not to the face of Jesus. And when I looked at this scripture, I had to ask the Lord, why out of all of your disciples, out of all of the people that you encountered, why did you reveal yourself to this woman first? Why was she privileged to get the first encounter with you? And he began to show me that the woman was representative of his bride. That the she was not intended to be a female in the physical, but the bride of Christ. So what would give us, or afford us the opportunity to be the first one to see revelation from him? And that's when he began to talk to me and tell me that you can't just get to know me. I must be revealed to you. I'm not a power that you can just walk upon and say, you know what? I know the Lord. He said, I have to choose to reveal myself to you. I have to choose the people that I'm going to decide to show myself to. And so I began to talk to God and I said, okay, you're taking me to the scripture and I'm seeing what you're saying. He said, now I want you to understand something. When we get to the scripture in John, the 20th chapter, and it starts talking about how when they got to the tomb and how the stone was rolled away and how this woman, Mary Magdalene, how she was one of the first ones at the tomb. So then how did the story go? Why, did she, why was she there? What would make her get up early in the morning? Where was the disciples? But see, there was something going on at the time. There was a great warfare going on in the land. And the disciples were in the process of being embarrassed about Jesus and his resurrection. And have you ever, uh, uh, God gave you a word about something. And until that day come, you're nervous because it's not so much that you want the word to come to pass. You just want to prove to somebody that I'm right. Who am I talking to? You just want to prove to somebody that you're right. That's what you want. You want to prove to somebody that you're right. You don't want the glory of God to be revealed. You just want to be right. And that's what happened to the disciples. That's what happened to them. They were right. They wanted to be right. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That's what they wanted. They wanted to be able to go to the tomb and say, we told you so. He got up. He got up because they wanted credit. They wanted credit for their word of knowledge. They wanted credit for their belief system. But how do you know that to be the truth? But this woman came to the temple. And this woman was excited. She got up because she said, I got to be there. The reason why she had a connection to Jesus that they did not have is because he got her devils. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. 
I just said something right there. If we're in this hour and we think we're going to try to serve God without the Lord messing with our devils, we got another thing coming. Because we want the power of God, but we don't want God to touch our devils. But the Bible said that the way she met Jesus, she introduced him to her demons. I'm not hearing y'all. When you get introduced to God by way of deliverance, there is a bond that you have with God that cannot be explained. So that helps me to understand why you got people now that come into the house of God and they don't look like you. And they got purple hair and green hair. I'm not hearing y'all. And they got tattoos and all kinds of stuff. But when it's time to praise God, you can't beat them praising God. You can't beat them jumping and shouting because they did not meet God from a religious perspective. They introduced God to their devil. Tell somebody, introduce him to your devils. No, no, tell, no, no, come on somebody. Tell somebody if you need to be delivered. The only way to get closer to God, the only way to, for God to reveal himself to you, you got to say God mess with it because we got some stuff we don't want God to mess with. I'm not hearing y'all. We got some things going on in us that we don't want God to mess with. Who am I talking to? There were some demons we don't want God to mess with. Who am I talking to? There's some stuff you don't want God to touch because it's become a part of your life so long. You calling it you and that's not you. That's the spirit of the enemy because he knows if you don't get rid of it, he will never be revealed to you. You don't stay with God by conversation. You don't stay with God because you know a lot of scriptures. You stay with God because of relationship. I'm not hearing y'all. You stay with God because of what he did for you. I'm not hearing y'all. That's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We don't have enough testimonies. You stay with God. You are witness for God for what he did for you. Has he done anything for anybody lately? said she said the bible said he casted out her devils now watch this now watch this he casted out her devils and that's why this thing got me that's why when he was reclining in the house when he was reclining in the house and he was relaxing and it was right before it was right before his crucifixion the bible said this woman who has seven devils i'm finna say something this woman who didn't have a good reputation walked in somebody's house, opened up an alabaster box and start pouring oil down on the head of Jesus. How dare you pour the oil? How dare you use your oil to pour it on somebody that is so holy? She was qualified to pour oil because he got her devils. Are you hearing me? Nothing that she had was more valuable then the fact that I remember when, I remember when, I remember when I was bound up and he delivered me. I remember when, I remember when, when I was tormented in the middle of the night. And ever since this man prayed for me, I've been delivered. Now it doesn't matter how much it cost me. It doesn't matter the price of, I got to pour it on him. My God, are you hearing God? Watch this. And the story gets thicker than this. And the story gets thicker than this. She poured the oil. She poured it on him. Watch this. And he said, this woman, what this woman have done for me. Look at this. She's, a, she's anointed me before time. Why? Watch this. She's anointed me before time. Because guess what? Didn't nobody know that by the time they got Jesus off the cross, between the sixth and the ninth hour when he died, but by the time they got him off the cross, the Bishop, they weren't going to have enough time to oil him down. And they said the reason why they oiled you with a thick oil, because it was noted that just in case you come back to life, in that region it was so hot, they didn't want the skin to crack. So just in case you decide to get up, they would oil you down real heavy. Are you hearing me? When he got her demon, she had a revelation that I better go on him because I know he gonna get up. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. All of a sudden she turned prophetic. Who am I talking to? When he gets your devils you can see in the spirit. When he gets your devils up, you can see where he is. When he gets your devils you can hear where he going. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Who am I preaching to? When he gets your devils. He 
said, this woman, wait a minute, this woman had poured the oil on me before time. Because by the time they got him off the cross, they only had enough time to wrap him up and put him in the tomb. So guess what she was doing, Bishop? Somebody said, why did she get up early? She was going to finish her job. Now that's yo, yo, yo. Uh -huh, that's the reason why you come to church. You don't come to church to see your friends. You don't come to conferences like this so you can hog nod. You come to finish your job. You come to give him glory. You come to finish the spices. You come to finish all of them. Who am I talking to? Then watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. So she gets to the she gets to the tomb and she got spices and some more oil. Bishop, she didn't already pour some oil and it was already expensive. But do you see the revelation? Now she went and got some more. See, that's for the people that said, I already got enough. I really got a breakthrough. No, I want a breakthrough every day. Y'all ain't hearing me. I want God to do something for me every day. I'm not hearing me. One time is not enough. Yesterday was yesterday. But every day I want new oil. Every day I want new spices. That's the reason why you got up this morning and came. You got up this morning and came because you're seeking for new oil. You got up this morning and came because you need something different to happen in your life. I don't understand what I'm searching for. But I know I'm looking for God. So how do I find him? Here are my devils. Search me oh lord anything that you find that is not like you take it out somebody said take it out no i don't think y'all i said somebody said take it out now see if you say that long enough something to start happening i said somebody said take it out Say anything that's not like you, Lord, take it out. Anything that hinders me, take it out. Anything that's in your way, uh, that's keeping me from seeing the revelation of your power and of your might, take it out. Watch this. Now I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to help somebody with their oil. Bishop, husband, they say, well, I don't feel like praising God. I don't feel like glorifying God. I mean, well, you know when they said praise him, you know, we got God, we got the way we pour oil categorized in levels. You know, you said, give God glory, and you go, oh, hallelujah. And then you said, give him glory, and they get a little stronger, and everybody go, oh. And you said, give him glory, and all of a sudden, they say, oh, my God. And then when it look like everything break out, everybody go to running. So we, so we, so we done, we done, we done rationalize this thing out. But see, let me tell you what happened. This woman poured the oil and she poured everything she had. You know why? Because in the spirit she was following what she felt prophetically. But she didn't understand what she was doing. But God understood what she was doing. You know why? You know why he had to her to pour all of what she had? Because she's the same woman that her brother name is Lazarus. And she was going to need this same Jesus to come and raise him from the dead. Who am I talking? To, but because she poured up the oil in advance, he remembered her. When God said praise him, when he said pray, you don't know what the pouring of your oil is connected to. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. That's just not your thank you, Jesus. That's just not your oil. That thing is connected to your family. That thing is connected to what God is going to do six months from now. Who am I talking to? That praise and that pouring of that oil, that is connected to what God is going to do one hour from now. Is there anybody in here that feels like pouring the oil? I can't, watch this, that I can't afford. I can't afford, tell your neighbor, I can't afford to pour my oil in stages. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I tell your neighbor, I can't afford to pour my oil in stages. Say, because I came to the conference and my oil is connected to some stuff that I left back home. And so now that I'm here, I'm going to pour it. Just give me a minute. I got to pour some oil because there's some stuff that I need the oil to work out. There was some stuff that I need the oil to fix. up. There's some well by Shanta Mahaya. There's some stuff that I need the oil to resurrect. Somebody give God a shout. He said, watch this. 
said when the disciples came, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you how, how he showed me. He said when they got there, I close with this. When they got there, once they went in and peeped in, and Peter went on in, and he saw that the garments was bare. He said the garments was laying down, but the one that was over his head was rolled it up. The garment to the body was laid out. The one over his head was rolled up. Because you don't get my mind laid out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hearing you. You don't, you don't get my thoughts laid out. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to be smart enough. You got to be smart enough to know me before I reveal my mind to you. My body, there it is. There's a cloth. But what I was thinking is rolled up. And the Bible said when they went in the tomb and they saw the garments, watch this, saints. Don't that sound like the traditional churches? Don't that sound like what God don't intend for global to be like? When they found out he had got up, they just went home. I'm not hearing y'all. The Bible said they went home. But the one who he got her demons the Bible said she refused to move from that place she stood there and went to cry I'm not hearing y'all she began to weep and cry who am I she refused to leave why did she refuse to leave because she said wait a minute what have you done see Bishop some people want positions and, 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 and some people want power and, and some people want to say I was one of the twelve and, 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 and some people want to say he handpicked me and, 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 and I was his disciple that y'all ain't saying some, some people they can't they can't do nothing unless you you know you, you stroking them and you know, all of that you know see I ain't talking about me because Bishop no I don't even talk to Bishop half the time he, he in six months go by and we don't even talk you know I, you know when, when, I, when, when God give me to do stuff I, I just do it I just do it because because I understand the vision you know out there at the tape table, you see the, the revival and the dying. The bishop didn't tell me to do that. He, he, he didn't say, I want you to do this, and I want you and husband to get together, and I want y'all to do it. No, we just did it. We just did it because we know that's what the vision is. So if we don't produce the vision, can't nobody see the vision. And we can't do the vision just stand here hollering. You got to set the vision before the people. See what they meant? And then see, when you do the vision like that, then it ain't about you. See, you know when you in the vision. Because it ain't about you, you know. Because the tape table don't say Juanita Bonnie's table. It said me and Bishop and Bishop Husbands, and we all got all our product on there. Because it ain't no Juanita Bonham station. Because this ain't no Juanita Bonham ministry. This is global. Uh, see, I'm, 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 not, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. And see, when people can't sit where they want to sit, they going back to their hotel room. When they don't get the, the recognition that they want, they going back. Somebody at the tape table hurt your feelings, you got an attitude for the rest of the conference. When people don't get it the way they want to get it, you go home. You know why? Because you, <laughs> you were looking for the relationship as to how it can position you. This woman wasn't. She just said, I'm going to stay right here because I want to know what have you done with his body. I want to know what have you done with my Savior. I don't care nothing about no clothes I don't care nothing about nothing else. I want to know where is his body. That's the question that God is asking today. Where is my body? I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I preaching to? Where is my body? It's somewhere locked up in games. Where is my body? It's somewhere locked up in backbiting and hypocrisy and positions and arrogance and pride. The spirit of the Lord is standing at the doorway of the tomb once again. He's saying, I'm looking. I'm looking for my body. She said, Somebody gonna tell me something. I ain't going nowhere. See, now people be seeking the Lord. And when they don't get it right away, they give up. That's what these early mornings is. They give you time to say, somebody gonna tell me where it is. So, somebody gonna tell me where it is. She said, where is, where, where is his body? And the Bible said, as she began to weep, the man came. Look at this. The man came. This is one of the greatest revelations God had ever given me. It, when I say it changed me, the man came and, he, and she said, the Bible says she assumed him to be the gardener. Well, well, you assumed him to be the gardener when the scripture has specifically testified that it was Jesus. But you assumed him to be the gardener. 
what have you done with my, with my Lord? And I said, why would he then turn around and say, this is me, when it was him all the time? Why didn't he just tell her that and stop her from crying? No, because he said to me, there were times why I needed that I need to disguise myself until I'm sure of what people are looking for. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't get nobody to say nothing. I didn't get nobody to say nothing. See, some of y'all came looking for the choir. Some of y'all came this morning looking for Juanita Bonham. That's why you can't put your camera down. Some of y'all came looking for Periscope numbers and Facebook numbers. I'm not hearing y'all. Some of y'all came to get your hit on your website. I'm not hearing y'all. Some of y'all want y'all Facebook to go up. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Somebody came because they're trying to get a position. Somebody came because I want to meet Juanita Bonham. I want to meet Dr. Showell. I want to meet Bishop. I want a picture with Bishop. And God said, you will go home. Just like you came until God is sure. What are you looking for? And until he knows, he's going to disguise himself as a praise team. He's going to disguise himself as a choir. He's going to disguise, I'm not hearing y'all. He's going to give you the tantalizing that you want, but you will not get him because that's not what you came looking for. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I can't get nothing. I can't, and when, when he waited, how that old child, you got people saying, when you gonna hear my cry? When I know what you want. When you gonna answer me, God? When I know what you want. I've been here two days now, and I still ain't got my breakthrough, because I'm waiting on you to say, if you don't give me a house, I want you, Jesus. If you don't give me a car, I want you, Jesus. If you don't let him call me out and prophesy to me, it's all right, because I'm not looking for man. I'm coming. I'm looking, where is he? Where, where is Jesus? I'm, I'm looking for Jesus. Have you seen Jesus? Have you, well they go one either, but I know, I know, I know they go one either, but have you seen Jesus? I'm looking for Jesus. Well they go, they go, they go Bishop Hudson, I know he powerful, but have you seen Jesus? And look all on the scene, see, see if I see Jesus. I wonder when Bishop coming in. You looking for who you looking for? And it wasn't until she said, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking for, for, for my rabbi. I'm looking, I'm looking. And that's what he said. It's me. It's me. Because I got to be sure you want me. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't saying that. I gotta be, I gotta be sure that you want me, because you know what? He showed the disciples garments, but he showed her, her himself. You don't hear what I'm saying. If you want God to show up in your situation today, I'm preaching to somebody. If you need an instant miracle, you tell the Lord whatever you decide. If you don't ever give me a house, just give me you. If you don't ever give me a car, just give me you. If you don't ever give me a position, just give me you because if I got you then I got a revelation and if I got a revelation I know that no weapon that's formed against me no, oh you don't hear me you don't hear me everything gotta show up I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done that's somebody right there that came looking for Jesus I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all said that Israel praised God. Do you know why Israel praised God? Because they had a leader that praised God. I'm not hearing y'all. Do you see what I mean? I'm standing here preaching. This woman is praising. And you got people looking at her. Like, what's wrong with her? Why don't she just... When the minute you saw her praising like that, you should have said, that's my turn too. I'm getting ready to break out. I'm not hearing y'all. Because I came looking for Jesus. Somebody start shouting up. I came looking for Jesus. Up. Somebody give him a praise up. I came up because I'm looking for Jesus. Up. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give him a praise. Up. Somebody tell somebody I'm looking for Jesus. Up. Somebody shout.
That's it. I'm, 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 I'm finished. Because you just missed your turn. I done told you about that categorizing praise. Every praise is a hard praise. Every time. Because you don't know what's locked up in it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You ain't got time to wave him a little bit. Now when I say praise God, you praise him like you looking for divine revelation. Now praise him. You still looking around. You still looking at somebody else. You still looking at somebody else get their breakthrough. What about you? I said open up your mouth and praise it. I'm done. I'm done. She got a position that nobody else got because she poured the oil before everybody else did. Who am I talking to? I dare you to pour the oil right now. I dare you to pour the oil right now. I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to pour. Pour the oil. Pour the oil. Pour the oil. Pour it before time. Pour it before you need it. Pour it for your children. Pour it for your church. Pour it for your family. Pour it in that bed. Pour it. Pour it. Pour the oil. You better pour it. You better pour it. It's going to meet you. You better pour it. It's going to work for you. You better pour it. It's going to heal. You better pour it. It's going to deliver. She didn't wait. She didn't wait. She didn't wait. wait she didn't wait she didn't wait put your camera down she didn't wait she didn't wait she poured something expensive because it was going to be the value of her brother's life if it wasn't a connection to it the scripture wouldn't have said it he said, when Lazarus died, it was his sister that poured the oil. It was his sister that got Jesus ready to get up. You don't pour it. You didn't get him ready to get up. And how do you demand him to show up in your situation? You forgot to pour him oil. I'm, I'm not here nobody. Your praise has nothing to do with church. Your praise has it. Why you think the Bible was so harsh with the five foolish and the five wise? Because if you ain't got no oil, you ain't got no future. No, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing my talk. You sit up in church and you ain't got no oil. You ain't got no future. You don't hear me. I'm trying to help you today to be reintroduced to your oil. And that's why for the next 30 seconds, you better praise God. Because God want to reconnect you back to the power of your oil. Because the Bible says that it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Somebody bless him. Bless him for the oil. Bless him for the oil. Bless him for the oil. Hey! Bless him for the oil. Thank him for the oil. Push it out. Push it out. Push it out of your spirit. Until your children come home. Pah! Until your relatives come up crack. Pah! Come on, pour the oil. 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 Pour 
of the oil until all I want is you. Help me to part until I want nothing but you. Help me to part until I see your face. Help me to part until I see revelation. Help me to part. Somebody shout. you poured the oil first the Bible said it's gonna be revealed to you first if you want to know how to get pushed up in the line if you want to know how to get God to respond be the first to release the oil and the revelation will come to you first oh my God. people will be asking you how did you know that you'll be able to tell them I poured the oil two years ago I poured the oil while we were in Gulf in 2016 and this is what my oil revealed to me I'm the first one to see God when everybody else think everything is chaotic I can still see God when everybody else don't know which way it's going to turn out I can still see God when I don't know which way to turn I can still see God because when it was imperative for me to pour the oil I poured it in advance gave me this revelation people something hit me so strong and I said God what is this he said when I speak I want you if he said pray if somebody said let's praise the Lord before they can get out let's I'm already hollering like I did when I first got saved. I told him to take me back to my when I first got saved praise. Okay, I ain't got nobody to talk to me right there. Because some of y'all in y'all preacher praise. Some of y'all in y'all evangelist praise. I'm not hearing y'all. But I said, God, take me back to my first got saved praise. We're not going to appreciate what you did for me. When your light was new on the inside of me. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And now you can't even say let's and my hand is up. And I'm hollering. And guess what? They throwing sheets on me now. Oh yeah, I've been, I've been a preacher for 40 years. But now they got to help me up off the altar. Now they got to help me out of the church the other day. And I was staggering to my car. And they had to drive me home. I'm not hearing y'all. Because I told the Lord, I got to have revelation. And the only way that I'm going to get it, I got to pour the oil first. And I got to pour it until I'm drunk. I got to pour it until I'm empty. I got to pour it until nothing is left. I got a part in my spirit. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me until I feel empty. I'm not hearing y'all because when I get empty, there's a miracle coming. There's an importation coming. There's a download coming because I know the revelation of pouring the oil first. said why I can't get none done because some of y'all got cheap oil am I helping us cheap oil thank you Jesus cheap oil God I praise you cheap oil you said give God a shout cheap oil you you're walking around releasing cheap oil and asking God for expensive gifts. You want God to heal your relative from cancer. That's expensive. But you want to give him, hmm, he's so good. Cheap oil. Because you're cheap. You don't know the real value of anything because you're cheap. Because you think that it's about you. It's about my back hurting, my side hurting, my throat hurting. I, 
came in here hoarse. But the old saints taught me how to praise him till you lose your voice and praise him till you get it back. Okay, I, I ain't hearing y'all talk back to me. Y'all don't know this level. Y'all don't know this level. That's what they taught us. They said you praise God till you lose your voice. And then praise him till you get it back. Because when you get it back, that's when the Holy Ghost done took over. Who am I talking to? No, I ain't got no cheap order. Come on, that's why you shouldn't let nobody play with you. Don't let nobody play with your life. Don't let nobody play with your anointing. Because tell your name, it cost me too much. You don't know what the price I pay for where I am. My oil is too expensive. All over this building, I gotta go. I see you, man of God. It costs you too much. It costs you too much. It costs you everything. It costs you everything. Oh, my shit. Oh, my shit. Here come the promise. Here come the promise. Here comes what he promised you. I just heard him say, hey, you done paid a great price. You done paid a great price. But here come the price. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give it to him. Oh, I was waiting on that. I was waiting on that. Somebody give it to him. Somebody give it to him. Hey, come on, come on. Nobody know the cost of the oil in your alabaster box. It cost some of us everything. releasing the right level because if ain't nobody talking about you if ain't nobody jealous if it ain't nobody on your road that don't wish you sit down somewhere you ain't giving God nothing no I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because when you start pouring the real oil somebody ought to be able to complain about it I wish she sit down I wish she sit down I wish she stop running I wish she stop hollering that's when you know you pulling real oil. Who am I talking to? Somebody! Somebody pull it! Pull it one more time! Open up your mouth! Pull it! Yes. I stood in this place yesterday. in this place yesterday and gave a command of the Lord it wasn't about me I gave a command of the Lord and some of you the Lord has convicted you and I can hear it because when the Lord tell you to do something it's because it is attached to something else up the road that you can't see that woman who poured that oil didn't know her brother was gonna die but because she poured the oil it gave her the power to wait on Jesus because she poured the oil to prepare Jesus to get up and guess where he got up at in Lazarus now y'all ain't saying nothing are you hearing that and what was Lazarus all about this is the greatest part. It wasn't about him. Jesus did not call Lazarus from the grave. When he called the name Lazarus, he birthed out a whole nother culture just by calling his name. The Jews began to change their mind and believe Jesus when they saw Lazarus get up. Your oil is about a whole nother culture that's coming out of you. 
what God is calling you to do on these grounds, it's bigger than you. And if it stops at you, all you're going to get is a car. All you might get is a house. All you may get is some school tuition, a light bill, a gas bill, and some rent. But if you understand what God is calling for, then you'll know that what I'm about to push out is for another culture. Good Lord, have mercy. I'm birthing something out in grandchildren. You don't hear what I'm saying? You don't hear what I'm saying? I'm birthing something out in my children and my children's children. This right here is an inheritance. This is a posterity. Not prosperity. Posterity. Not prosperity. Posterity. P-O-S. Terity. Posterity. Meaning lineage. Meaning children. Meaning what else is to come that is up the road and around the corner. And he spoke it. And I'm going to give you the word of the Lord one more time. Because me, I don't tarry. Because I don't have to. I just speak what God said and keep it moving. When he asked yesterday for that 309 seed, he said people were in this building. And it was like I'm going to rationalize it. I'm just going to say this a little bit and say this a little bit and, and wait till Friday because I want to. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What God is doing in global, it has never happened before. These are new grounds for a new era, for a new dispensation, for a new order, for a new culture. You cannot put a new spirit on your old face. If you're going to be new, everything about you got to be new. The way you walk, the way you talk. You can't come in here and say we're making a difference and you go back home and turn back into the same person. That's a schizophrenic spirit. All over this building, he said 50 people. Just give me some envelope. He said that. And he said because you don't know what I'm doing for you. You don't know that when I call you to do something that you think is expensive, it's because of where I'm trying to take you. And if you don't move when the window is open, when it shuts, you will get money again. But you may not ever get this opportunity again. If you think that 309 is something deep, then you're not ready for the next level of what he's getting ready to do. And this is the way he said it. He said, tell the people, now obey me. And do what I told you to do. Come all over this building and get these envelopes. He said, now obey me. Obey me. Obey me. Obey me. Obey me. You don't know what I'm doing. I said, you don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm doing. He said, obey me. Stop crawling because you're here. You're here. You're here, you're here, you're here. Obey me. There's something on the horizon with your name on it. Obey me, obey me, obey me. There's something on the horizon with your name on it. Let me tell you something, if the devil is not arguing with your mind, if the enemy is telling you why you shouldn't give it, then you're not getting ready to walk in faith. It don't have your name on it, but why are you walking? Something should be telling you. You know you shouldn't get it. You don't know if you can. Well, you know you ought to save it. No, because he wars after what he knows is eternal. Are you hearing me? He's Listen, he wars in your ears because he don't want you to move in it. Because he knows once you do, the yoke is broken. Are you hearing me? The yoke is broken. Come now. Come now. There's 12 more people that's sitting down. Come now. I know what I'm hearing. I know what I'm hearing. He's warring after you. He don't want you to do this. He doesn't want you to do this. He's warned after you. Come now. My God, I feel it. Come now.